thank you, um, Alison, for that. Uh, I've just turned on my video as well. So please do um, let me know if the video is obviously um, putting a lot of load on everyone's internet and I'm more than happy to turn that off. So thank you very much for that. Uh, so so like Alison said, my name's Leanne uh, Ngo. I'm from Deakin University. Um, so my role within Deakin is um, I lead the Learning Innovations team and the ePortfolio initiatives within the Faculty of Business as well. Um, I'll also pass it on to Christina now, if you could just introduce yourself as well. Thanks, Christina. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Christina Hopner and work for Catalyst in Wellington in New Zealand, and I'm the Mahara project lead and community facilitator for the Open Source Mahara ePortfolio project. And um, Leanne, Patsy, and I have come together because we were part of the author team for chapter eight in the uh, field guide to ePortfolios. And so we are kind of still forming a team and presenting some of the work that we have done for that today. Thank you very much, Christina. All right, so so we've got around 20 minutes to talk about ePortfolios and will. So, so the work that we've been doing is really focusing broader um, on the broader scheme of how we transition to careers for students and also to include career development in that. So we're going to take a step back. Um, we know that for us, for our process and the way our framework is working, Will is a core component of that, um, that process as well. So we know that um, developing student awareness of career and employability skills is strongly aligned with how high education graduate um, outcome in terms of their goals are presented as well. So in today's presentation, we will start off with a broad um, view of how career uh, goals and development is used to support um, e-portfolio pedagogy. So we'll be looking at key, four key areas, looking at stakeholders, uh, branding, professionalism, and obviously will, which is the main area that we'll be concentrating on. We will go into particularly discussing about uh, will as a core component We'll also have Patsy as well. Patsy is going to be recorded and presented as well. We'll she'll talk about further how Will is being used as an example in the medical area and how she's used Will to build graduate capabilities and employability skills as well in that course that she's um, involved in. And at, towards the end, we'll add some reflection and also uh, go on to recommend some key resources for all our passionate practitioners in the space of ePortfolios and Will. All right, so moving on to the next slide. Yep, thank you for that. So this particular framework um, in terms of career thinking and development is what I was talking about in terms of taking a step backwards. Um, this concept of transition from, you know, for a student as an independent learner to an, sorry, for a dependent learner to an independent learner is central to our view of how career development learning works. So you can see that for us, for our framework, we can we have four key components in this. And one of them obviously looks at the uh, stakeholders that is involved. So stakeholders involved in e-portfolio and career thinking, we have obviously the higher education institution and also the employers, potential employers that are involved. So within the higher education institution, there are many stakeholders in there as well. Obviously, you have the typical students that are involved, the educators. The educators are both academic um, teaching staff members, the course directors, um, and also career developers as well. And that will advance to those educators working in the will space. And then you have stakeholders in regards to senior, senior executives or leadership um, roles as well, who has that top-down approach, who has, you know, the authority, the leadership to get resources in place. And there's administrators as well. For, by that, we mean there are other support services, whether it's an IT or ed tech division within the um, organization to actually build the platforms for that is actually really crucial. So you have the educators that look at the pedagogy and also the um, the actual IT platform that helps build the system in place. So stakeholders is very important for our whole process for as well. The next step in terms of our branding, now branding in terms of we look at three areas, self-promotion uh, for students as well. How do they go about understanding the process of professional identity, branding themselves inwards and also outwards as well, and how we can integrate that um, that branding career development learning as well within 
units or within their courses and how we develop that within students. And at the same time, the next step in that is looking at the promotion of students. Um, if there is an opportunity within the careers services team or within the university where we can tie recruitment drives or promotional um, initiatives within the university where we can help promote the portfolios, the evidence of their capabilities um, further with potential employers. And at the same time, further down is the inter institutional promotion of what they do in terms of e-portfolios, the value of that, whether they um, link that off to their marketing promotional um, initiatives as well. So there's a three-step level in terms of branding for that. Now, professionalism is another area as well that we find really crucial within the uh, within the whole career thinking and development, developing students' um, professionalism, whether it be their academic skills, their employability skills, and the development of the lifelong and also life-wide uh, learning as well. Um, and then the other idea of the concept of resumes versus portfolios, I think understanding that concept is actually critical as well for our learners in that. Now, and then we get to the will component as well. So our will component is our focus of our um, presentation today where we'll be providing some examples. Now, in terms of will in itself, um, there are key areas that we are looking at in terms of providing authentic experiences. So in a sense, you know, mini assessments as work experiences within that's integrated as part of an assessment as part of their unit going forward. Um, it is critical that, you know, we have educators and learners that, um, that play a part where we refer to learning that has taken place in the workplace, so it's authentic. Whether it's simulated, etc., it doesn't have to be in the actual workplace in itself, for example. It could be giving them more authentic mini um, assessment tasks for that. Now, obviously there are other areas as well um, of topics that we also want to put in that wheel as well, whether it be um, graduate preparedness and also an opportunity to further uh, develop them professionally as well in that. So it is important that the usefulness of um, assessment tasks linked to will form um, you know, a work experience that should be considered when implementing will for students as well. Um, so it's important that we look at tasks that are formulated to build their skills and capabilities for uh, future graduates for employability going forward. We see the e-portfolio pedagogy helps link this aspect because it's an area, it's a space that provides the connection between learning outcomes, their coursework, their bill and career development all in one as well, where they can go off to look at um, thinking about the reflective practice and using that to help facilitate their thinking and development of career planning going forward. So that gives you like an overview in the context of how we see career thinking, um, how Will fits into this overall context. So what I want to do is um, then move on to give Patsy an opportunity to talk more about Will and an example of how ePortfolio and Will has been used in an actual course that she's also been um, passionate about. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Just be patient in terms of the um, change over here. So, Leanne or Christian, can you tell me if you can see Pat, the screen for Patsy? Uh, yes, I can see the screen, Alison. So why will for ePortfolio use and pedagogy? We figured that uh, work integrated learning could be supported with ePortfolio to address uh, graduate capabilities and how they were built at UNSW. So what is presented here is a triangulated view of how we see our students upon graduation. We see them as global citizens, scholars, leaders and professionals. However, do students really see themselves that way? ePortfolio is a way of instigating reflective practice in our undergraduate programs to allow students to start recognising the skills that they're building. This is particularly important when thinking about graduate employability. When thinking about work integrated learning in the medical sciences at UNSW, we not only ran ePortfolio through the program years one to four, but also transversely across context and across discipline 
in the medical sciences. We did this across anatomy, pathology, pharmacology and physiology. In particular, we were building the teamwork skill through work integrated learning assessment tasks. So we found that this was a very important mechanism for implementing reflective practice which was coupled to core discipline knowledge and authentic tasks. So work integrated learning is part of these four elements that relate back to the way we think about career learning and development. When thinking about work integrated learning, we really need to design authentic experiences for our students, as well as think about the concept of assessment as a type of work experience. So how do we do this within coursework? We ask students to reflect on various course assessment tasks as they're progressing through the task. ePortfolio provides a space for the students to think about these tasks as many work experiences. So the concept of working in a team came through for some of the assessment tasks that ask students to work together to build their knowledge in a particular area or discipline. ePortfolio was the space for students to start thinking differently about not only core discipline, but also the skills that were developed that address graduate capabilities at UNSW. Naturally, as students start to raise their awareness about these skills, they start to think about themselves as professionals and get ready for work placement in the future. So yes, this, this was Patsy talking about her experience of um, using Will in her medical science courses. And that was not just in one course, but across the entire curriculum. As you have seen, uh, it goes through multiple courses. And unfortunately, she could not be with us today because she was on the way to an ePortfolio conference in Europe sharing her insights here from the Southern Hemisphere uh, with those overseas. And um, while I'm preparing my slide, sorry. Um, what what you have hopefully seen in the in the in uh, Petsy's account is that you have all the stakeholders included. So we have the students in the mix, we have the educators in there, and also the employers that are involved in the activities. The, oh, sorry, I need to turn off the video, and also the the university just as part of the coursework and work integrated learning in the courses themselves. What Patsy hadn't really been talking about so much is the senior executives or the administrators. They were more in the background. What you will have also seen is that. Um, academic skills are being enhanced and that students learn for life, um, acquire skills that um, also flow into the UNSW strategy, which is very important in regards to the graduate attributes. And all of that is accomplished through the work integrated learning activities that um, are part of the program. And all these components flow into the graduate attributes that are supported by the portfolio in order to bring a better experience to the students to think about careers and their development and um, get them onto a good pathway for their future and for their career. Now, what Patsy showed us is just one example of using will and using portfolios in will and we've purposely not talking about any technologies in here because um, there are lots of different technologies that you can use a couple of other examples that you can explore at, in more detail after the session are mentioned here and the links are in the slides so that you can also just click on them directly and um, the left one is from southampton solent university um, a student, Olivia, who's been participating in a work skills course in order to prepare better for her career. So she's put together her portfolio showcasing what she has done and the experiences she has gained. The other example is from the University of Waikato and um, talks about also the use of portfolios in internships. 
both it, during the preparation phase for the internships, as well as then during the duration um, of the activities and how they have helped students, in this case, engineering students, but also biology students to um, reflect on their learning and also keep the university staff um, in touch with the students while they are not at uni. So there are many different ways of how you can um, use work and portfolios together. And we are soon hear from Laurie of uh, what she is doing in Australia. Now, at the beginning, I already mentioned that Patsy Lien and I had been the, uh, one of the teams in the field guide to ePortfolio. And we had two other collaborators from the United States um, in our team, and our chapter was directly on um, tr the transition to careers and career development. And you are very welcome to download this field guide to ePortfolio that had been published by ABLE and AAC and U last year. Um, Catherine Coleman, whom probably everybody here in the room knows, um, was one of the editors and has done a fabulous job keeping us in line and um, bringing this publication together with um, over 50 authors and um, making it a reality. So this field guide uh, takes a look at many different um, areas of portfolio implementation in the tertiary sector and is meant to be a short reading for people who are interested in bringing portfolios to the institutions and also needing some pointers of what to discuss with management, um, maybe even how to persuade certain people who are uh, skeptical to portfolios and yeah, give be a brief introduction to a lot of different areas in portfolios in order to have a good starting point from which to explore further. There are lots of references in this field guide that um, give you a good vantage point to start more reading more about things. And one of the things that um, uh, Kate is also looking into is how to keep the resources and the field guide itself active and uh, current with examples and additional references. The specific references from our presentation today in particular uh, for the examples that Patsy mentioned are in the slides, so you can take a closer look at them later on. And if you'd like to ask us any questions, but may not have the time today, or would like to know a little bit more than we have time for, then please do feel free to contact us.